You are listening to WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. This is Ghost Talk with 187 PI. Sit back and prepare yourselves for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelly Robertson and 187 PI research team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson. We have a fantastic show planned for you tonight, and we are bringing it to you live from the haunted Old Paulding County Jail here in Paulding, Ohio. I invite all, all of my listening friends out there to join us in chat at WBHM-DB.com, where you can get in on tonight's topic of conversation. Tonight, I have Kristen Boyd here with me to discuss witches, legends, and their lore, trials, and hauntings. Hello and welcome, Kristen. Hey, guys. I want to take this first opportunity, this moment. We have a very dear friend and someone who always listens to all the shows. Her name is Brenda, and today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Brenda. Happy birthday. So, you know me. I love to dive into the history of things, so this is going to be no different. One of the earliest records of a witch, okay, folks, It was actually written in the Bible between 931 B.C. and 721 B.C. Now, the witch craze itself, it didn't really take hold until about the 1400s within Europe. That's where it all starts. Seems like everything starts across the pond, doesn't it? It does. (laughs) You know... Between the years of 1482 and 1782, there were like 100,000 people who were accused of witchcraft in Europe. That's a lot of people. That's a huge amount of people. Upwards of 80,000 of these people, suspected witches, so they were, they were put to death. Imagine. 80% of them were women. And, you know, witchcraft, it actually became a crime within England in 1542 with the most popular choice of the guilty charge being death by hanging. (laughs) Believe it. Yes. Well, it all truly began because people were forced to live primitive lives without the luxuries of the modern medicines and treatment that we have today. And at the time, when a person was sick, ill, or in pain, there was little that could actually be done to help them. It was also during this time that some sage women learned the value of healing through herbs and other types of homeopathic treatments. And, you know, they don't usually call them sage women in these days, do they? They do not. (laughs) Well, they became very educated with the knowledge of herbal remedies to help ailments and ease childbirths by using various plant-based medicines. Well, unfortunately, during that time, little was understood about healing in those days. And it was, as Christianity spread across Europe, of course, many of the clergy of the church, they were upset about the aspect of women being educated. Is that insane? It is sad. It is. And as far as the church was concerned, 
all healing should be done strictly through the men in the church. You know, that's nothing for the women. And we were worried about, you know, the right to vote. Exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> over time, these healers, they began to be associated and accused of various crimes, such as heresy, being anti-Christian even, and eventually many were even accused of devil worshiping. Uh, well, you know, back in those days, everything must be the devil, you know? Yep. Think about that. Now, the church viewed he healing as like an evil sorcery and of black magic, you know? These supposed witches, they were now being accused of doing the devil's work and being in cahoots with him in some of the most orchestrated plans to help destroy mankind. That's what they thought. In reality, they were helping heal. That's right. <laughs> and they were believed to worship in large nocturnal groups where various social acts were performed, such as, you know, a little, not, you know, promiscuous hanky-panky, <laughs> naked dancing. <laughs> oh, and, so right. And gluttonous feasting get this, on human flesh of infants. Oh my. That is insane. Now, at the height of these acts, people at the time believed the devil himself would appear to participate with all the attendants. So he was, I guess, dancing naked around the campfire <laughs> too. <laughs> what a sight to see. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, to tame these evil women, the Pope, he issued a document on December 5th, 1484, that condemned the witches. He also um, authorized two inquisitors, and it was Jacob Springer and a Mr. Kramer to combat this problem of the witches. They produced this book that was entitled... The Hammer of Witches, okay? They even wrote a book, this is crazy, mm -hmm. that both Catholics and Protestants accepted. Now, the book itself, it contains stories about witches based on folklore, providing guidelines on how to identify and eliminate the witches. This book had been described as the most vicious and the most damaging book to ever been written in the world of literature, okay? That is saying something. Yes, it is. This book served as the platform for witch hunters to act on their prejudice for over 200 years. Sad people could be yes, manipulated for so long. Witch hunting book. Yeah. Now, these accusations and the new laws, they drove the healers further underground, of course. And uh, many of these healers, they tried to live quiet lives in deeply remote peasant villages. Unfortunately, by the late 1400s, that was not enough for these healers. They were eventually found and questioned about how they were practicing the craft. Now, religious sources were planning, planting fear as well as hysteria into the minds of many people by stating and accusing these healers of practicing witchcraft, which would be tried and executed publicly for all to see. So they made a big spectacle of it. Right. The actual accusations of witchcraft, you, you will not believe this, it required no actual evidence of guilt. That's the most astonishing thing, isn't it? Just by word of mouth. Yes. They could force all these people to believe these other people were witches. Yes, yes. Didn't well, need any proof. Yeah. Well, witches and the practice of witchcraft continue to be feared, and the legends and myths surrounding them continue to evolve. Now, due to the festival of Samhain, a celebration at the end of harvest season, a great deal of folklore was created. During Samhain, witches were thought to anoint themselves with a balm that made their faces very shiny and light. It is thought that this ointment gave their skin an ethereal appearance, leading up to the rumors of witches being able to fly. 
Oh, so that's where that come from. It came from a little far-fetched, but you know. Yeah. So early so-called witches did carry brooms, but not for flying, as <laughs> some would think. Now, these brooms were actually used to cleanse an area or room before a healing ritual could be performed. Now, these days, I think they use feathers and yeah. such to do mm -hmm. such things. Well, this practice could have led to the notion that witches could fly and did so with the aid of a broomstick. Far-fetched? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But obviously not for past times. Right. Well, eventually thousands were arrested and brought to the inquisitors for examination. Now, one way the accused witch was tested was by stripping and shaving them. Oh. But you can't imagine. Then they were searched, usually in public, for any suspicious markings they called the devil's mark. Now, they would then stick a needle into any spot they found, such as birthmarks, warts, moles, and scars. If the prick didn't hurt or bleed, the spot was considered a mark of Satan. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Well, some accused were bound and put into a blessed body of water. If they sank, they were deemed innocent and pulled out. Now, if they floated, they were considered witches and executed on the spot and handed over to be tried. Other suspects were weight because it was thought that witches had little to no weight. Oh my gosh, I am a chubby girl, <laughs> so I would float <laughs> and I would be hanged. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Craziness. Well, in most cases, to be able to execute the accused, they first needed to confess to being a witch. So other torturing measures were set in place to help them with the confessions. Kind of probably much like the detectives of today, how they interrogate and badger until you break, you know? I could see that. The church would use instruments. Oh, for tree. <laughs> such as thumb and leg screws. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Head clamps and the Iron Maiden to generate the truth needed to complete the execution. Well, it was warned, though, that when the woman or women were under examination and torture, the torturer was not to make on eye contact with them as her evil powers might cause the torturer to develop feelings of compassion. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. So while you're, <laughs> you know, screwing my leg to the floor or whatever, oh my goodness. do not look into the eyes oh or you will feel sorry for me. My, and who wouldn't confess? even if they Just to get them to stop. Exactly. I you mean, know. That's crazy. Well, finally, relief of accused witchcraft and witches began to arrive. <laughs> In 1631... A priest named Frederick Spee, who had accompanied many people judged to be witches, stated that none, in his viewpoint, were actually guilty. Well, oh, bravo! Bravo! <laughs> and if that witch hunting continued, the land would become empty of people. <laughs> Obviously. Especially since it was targeting women. So. Yes. Meanwhile, physicians began recognizing that such things as seizures could be linked to health-related issues and not demon possessions. It was during the 17th century that the number of trials sharply decreased, and by the end of that century, the witch craze had all but ended. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, the witch craze of Europe did not go unnoticed. As the craze was declining in Europe, it began taking place within the U.S. Oh, boy. So it's leaving there and it's coming here. The legends, lores, trials, and torture techniques varied from some of the Europe's, you know, overall perspectives. Within the U.S., the belief of witches or wizards were that they were bound to Satan by giving them their soul, and in return, they received the gift of having supernatural powers. <laughs> What do you think about that? Interesting. Indeed. Yes. The deed was signed in blood of the witch, and horrible ceremonies confirmed the pact. Satan would then give his now ally a familiar.